Often, new stories about our healthcare system tend to be negative and worrisome. But we're shifting right now to talk about something that the media tends to ignore. Gratitude. When illness strikes, people are put through the test. Our next guests have been through a tough time, but want to talk about what, or should we say who, got them through it. In Niagara Falls, Stephen McGannity, who found himself under the care of nurses several times over the last couple years, most recently when he had cardiac surgery in November. And joining me in studio, Janet Rogers, who had both her late husband and her mother needing care these past few years. Welcome to you in studio and welcome Stephen joining us on the line. Let's start off by looking at some tweets showing appreciation for the nurses who worked through the holiday season to keep us all safe. The first one comes from Kenny Heinz, who posted this photo of his wife, Nurse Shelley, in full snow gear, and even, a, I think we see a ski goggles as well. On Christmas Eve, he writes, and his, his tweet is directed to the premier, Premier Doug Ford, at Ford Nation, I think my wife and registered nurses across the province are worth a lot more than a 1% raise. Here she is ready to walk to work in this blizzard, knowing she may be forced to be there more than the scheduled 12 hours of her shift. All right, let's move on to a second tweet. Second tweet is written by agency nurse and advocate Birgit Umegba. She writes, an ICU nurse colleague of mine came off night shift this morning, went home to sleep, and left home since 3 p.m. today because of the snowstorm to arrive at work for 7 p.m. She will work for 12 hours and then drive home tomorrow. Just one example of how nurses keep the system afloat. All right, let's read one more. This is from Diane Martin, CEO of the Registered Practical Nurses Association of Ontario, shared this photo of her family posing in front of a Christmas tree in 1963. On the left is her mother, a nurse getting ready to leave for work. She writes, across Ontario, nurses and their teams are caring for PTS, that's short for patients, today. They deserve better than the struggles they face now. My daughter is in ICU, is working ICU today. I worked Christmas for 26 years and below is my mom heading to night, which is of course short for the night shift. On Christmas Eve in 1963, it's always been a sacrifice, but never like now. All right, so I'm gonna start with you, Janet. You supported two very beloved family members with their experiences in the healthcare system in 2022. Can you tell us more about the circumstances that led them to their hospitalization? Yes, of course. So I will talk first about my husband, who unfortunately passed away last February. Um, he became ill in October and uh, had some surgery and a number of complications. He was in the hospital seven times, including the final time when he died in hospital. Um, at the same time, my mother was in the same hospital. She uh, was in hospital four times um, in the past year, uh, not including a two month stay in a rehab uh, facility. And she moved in late September to a long-term care facility, which was something that we needed to happen for her and have been very grateful for that. Um, during these hospitalizations, I was at three different hospitals with my mm -hmm. family members and um, received a tremendous amount of support from the staff and particularly the nurses in those hospitals. All right. Stephen, I'm gonna to come to you. You were in the hospital for cardiac surgery in November. First question, how are you doing now? Good, good. I just had an ablation in November. All right, and have there been other instances in over the past few years where you needed medical care? I did 11 days in ICU intensive care uh, in St. Catharines uh, just before COVID, so November, December 19, and then five days in uh, uh, emergency uh, last year. All right, so we spent some time there. All right, I'm gonna follow up with uh, Janet. We're gonna talk about your mother. We have a photo here uh, in mid-December your mom spent over 84 hours in a hospital hallway after admission. Here's that photo that you granted us uh, permission to share. She's laying in a hospital bed and she looks like she's in pain. To her left, there's a small table holding a couple of styrofoam cups, uh, milk cartons, a diaper, a roll of tape. What we don't see really is a call bell, a code blue button, or any sort of oxygen uh, masks. We do see sort of a, a makeshift privacy screen there, but that's a very long time to spend in a hospital hallway. Uh, 
How did the nurses at the hospital support you and your mother through that experience? Well, you described the situation extremely well. Um, that is exactly where she was in a hospital hallway, a makeshift part of the emergency ward in the hospital. Uh, the nurses that worked in all of the areas that we were in when she was hospitalize, hospitalized um, were the people who gave us information, the people that if she would call, because as you said, no call bell, no ability to call for someone, and the nurses are they're busy, they're out helping other patients as well. But they were there, they responded, they talked to her, they explained what was going on, they were as kind and caring as, as they could possibly be. And they also were respectful of her privacy, as you could see the, the makeshift um, screens to, to help cover her when she did need personal care. I, I do want to ask, you know, when, you're, when you got to the hospital and you realized that this is, you're not getting a room, mm -hmm. this is where you're going to be, uh, how did you feel the nurses took that? Like, did they feel like this is the best that we can do in this situation? Or th did it seem like their hands were tied? I think when she first got to hospital, she went by ambulance. I didn't realize when I arrived that it would be such a, it turned out to be more like 104 hours that mm. she was uh, in a hallway. Although having been admitted almost immediately to the hospital, the nurses were the ones who explained the situation. They were the ones who, who, again, kindly and gently said, this is our situation. This is the reality of what we are dealing with right now. And they t explained it to us in such a way and said, the, the most common stay in the emergency hallway beds was three to four days at that point oh, wow. in time. Um, now, when she was in, it was just constantly busy, a constant stream of people coming into emergency, um, at one point, she was very close to where the ambulance bays arrive, and paramedics, patients coming and going all the time. Uh, the nurses, again, were the ones, they were the ones with the knowledge. They were the ones that were able to explain, here's the situation. She's here now. She is probably going to be moved, and they were very clear, to another hallway bed. Oh, wow. And she was moved at 3 o'clock in the morning to a quieter hallway, so a hallway where at least they could dim the lights. Okay. Stephen, I'm going to come to you. How have nurses contributed to your overall experience navigating the healthcare system? From what I hear from Janet's sort of experience, they were awesome. They sort of, you know, have sort of a, a tough position to be in, not only providing care, but also navigating sort of the obstacles. What was your, what's your experience been like sort of navigating the healthcare system with nurses? I think that the, the thing that I take away most from, uh, from, my experience is, is that calm compassion that they have. They, they're run off their feet. They got, you know, one case I had, there was 10 or 12 of us in the, the ER. Um, sitting, I was sitting in a wheelchair for six hours or five hours. Wow. Um, but they all came by and they all said something to me. They all said, hi, how are you? What can we do? Would you like some water? Would you, you know, what is that? And they laughed when we made jokes, and thankfully I had a book so I could sit and deal with it. But uh, that's what I would think, is that that compassion that you felt, that was the weird part, is because these people are run off their feet. I would have probably killed somebody halfway through it. <laughs> um, but they were, they were just very, very professional. Um, you could sense that they were frustrated and you can sense that they knew exactly what they were doing, why they were doing it, and how they were doing it. I was so, impressed. Stephen, are there any specific conversations or experiences that you've had with nurses over the last year or two years uh, that really stand out to you? Uh, well, I had the, I think the funniest one was um, when finally, and the nurse had come up and say, your room is almost ready, we're gonna put you in, in our, our emergency, emergency uh, waiting area, it's discharge area. And she kept on coming back and saying, we're just getting it clean, we're just getting it clean. And <laughs> so I said, I said, you know, you don't have to paint it, don't worry about it. <laughs> and started to giggle and just looked at me, shook her head and walked away. And that was good. Um, th the second one was when I was in um, um, the Hamilton General getting, you know, prepped for surgery. Um, you know, the doctor said, you know what we're going to do. And I said, yes. I said, you're going to 
take an Eldon wood burning kit, stick it into me, and uh, <laughs> colorize some um, uh, mis- uh, misfiring parts of my heart. And I just said, just as long as you don't carve your initials in it. And then I started to laugh. And so I'm lying on this table with, you know, $4 million worth of hardware around me. And everybody's laughing. And three minutes later, I was asleep. That's awesome. I am sure they, I'm sure they still remember that story as well. So that's, that's an awesome story. Janet, I want to come to you. Any specific conversations or, or stories from nurses? Really a couple of conversations, I would say. One uh, was with my mother when she was experiencing hallway health care. And it was a nurse who had, this was, we're in Mississauga. She was in hospital in Mississauga. And I was talking to the nurse and she said, she was an agency nurse and we all know that this is part of the dirty little secret of healthcare right now is a lot of nurses are coming from agencies. So she had driven from Ajax that morning. And it was the first time she'd been at that hospital. And she said to me, you know, I go where I'm needed because there's need everywhere. And then I said to her, is it like this in Ajax? And she said, yes, absolutely. This is everywhere. Everywhere I go, this is the situation. And she was very calm and reassuring and said, but we're still here. We're, you know, we're coming. We're here at work. I guess the second and the most touching was um, as my husband uh, was taken to hospital for the final time, um, he was in the cardiac care unit. He had Mm. suffered a a massive heart attack and he did not regain consciousness. But the nurses treated him like a human being. They spoke directly to him. They didn't sort of have a conversation with me. They made the assumption that he was there and he could understand what he was hearing and what they were saying. And they were kind, they were caring, they were thoughtful. And this was a very difficult situation. We're dealing with not just him, but the family, myself and my children. And all around me, families are going through the same thing. And Mm -hmm. I realized that. And I thought they go from room to room and they not only support the patient, but they support these families as well with that kind, caring, compassionate, something you, you really, I don't think you can train that. I think that's in inside you. Stephen, when you were at the hospital, I'm curious, what was sort of the relationship of, of the nurses? What was the teamwork like? Was it, a, was it a perfect dance or was it sort of, you could tell that there was some friction and they were being overworked? Seamless, seamless was between the two, between the twos. In the last time in the hospital, it was really kind of amazing. It was seamless. They all knew what they were doing, what the next one was doing and how they were gonna do. All right, Janet. What was uh, what was sort of the 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 teamwork uh, between all the nurses there when you were there? I would agree with Stephen. They are seem. It was a seamless process. Nurses never stopped. They simply were run off their feet. Um, and so a dance is a good way to put it right. because they do need to be aware what the other nurses that they are working with are doing. Um, communication was excellent never raised their voices, never lost their cool, just managed to keep calm, cool, and collected. That same sort of energy, that kindness, has sort of transitioned. Your mom has moved uh, into a long-term care home. Yes. What's the relationship like with the nurses at that facility? Because it's a little different. There is some rapport that has to be built. And so I'm Mm -hmm. curious, what's the relationship there? The relationship with the nurses is very good. She's in a very small long-term care home. Um, and so I think I've grown to know them actually in the, in the very short time that she's been there. You know, we know each other on a first name basis. I, I know that, you know, one of the nurses has children. We ask about how your holidays were. Um, they are the ones who are front line and make the decision. For example, when my mother ended up in hospital in December, it was the nurse who said, we can no longer handle the situation here. She needs more care than we can give her. Um, And yet, both of us, when my mom was discharged, just kept saying, we can't wait to get back there. And I know that's not a common story Mm -hmm. with long-term care these days, but I couldn't wait to see her back there because of the care that she receives there from the nurses and from the other staff in the long-term care home. That's an awesome story. Uh, Stephen, I'm going to come to you. I want to ask you, Besides being able to take a great joke, what makes a great nurse? Well, Janet said it right. I think that, that the compassion, you can't, I don't think you can train that. Um, 
but it, it just it was for me it was professional they they constantly you know what is this what is this you'd ask them questions all the time and they would give you the answer and they would help you through and help you to understand because no one in their right mind wants to sit in that hospital room and you're sitting there and you're lying there in that really ugly thing that they give you to wear and what do you do you know if you don't have a book or or something you know what do you do i i couldn't sit and watch tv so i i had a book and that was the thing that saved me but the nurses were i'll go back to what i said earlier it was that that quiet compassion you could feel it it was palatable it was really kind of um kind of unique janet how about you what makes a great nurse Again, I would agree with what Stephen's saying, that compassion and that care, but also going the extra mile. Nurses who work double shifts, nurses who leave their families on Christmas to uh, go to work and care for my loved ones and everyone else's loved ones. That is something that is intangible and it goes beyond what many people believe that nurses do. They are really, they're the front line in a hospital, they're the front line in a nursing home. They're the ones that you rely on most to give you information and to care for you and your loved ones. You mentioned, you mentioned the front lines. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of drumming and beating and you know, <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of yes. pots and lots of support. And I don't know if you ask a nurse now if they feel that same support, whether it's from the mm -hmm. public or from their government. And I want to ask you, I'll start with Stephen. How can the province better support nurses? Repeal 124 first. Um, second, acknowledge their, their critical role in the healthcare system. Um, I think that more nurses should be on the design committees for what the hospital looks like and how a hospital functions. Um, I think that that's number one. Number two, you know, again, the, the, as Janice said, the, the the ugly little secret: the agency nurses are being paid eighty-five dollars an hour. Um, last time I looked, the um, the average wage of a nurse in the hospital was thirty-seven. And I'm going, okay, now how do we manage that? How can we spend six hundred million dollars on agency nurses? Are we not training enough, or are we just privatizing the system? I think that. It's critical that they, their voice is heard and heard loud and clear because they are the critical piece of critical piece of the uh, healthcare system. Janet, what do you think the province can do better to su support nurses? Again, I would totally agree with Stephen. Repeal Bill 124. Um, it has caused many fantastic nurses to leave our system or to move to a private nursing situation, such as an agency nurse. I would also suggest that politicians, whoever they are, need to listen. They need to be in a hospital. They need to listen to our stories. They need to listen to nurses, most importantly, and doctors and all workers in hospitals and understand the conditions that they're dealing with. They should not be working a double 24 hours straight shift. That's not safe for anybody. So listen to what nurses have to tell you. Listen to what they say and pay them appropriately for the professional job that they do. If you had to send a message uh, here to the nurses of this province, ones that maybe that you've encountered over the last couple of years or others who are working that double shift right now and haven't seen their family in a while, what would you say? A huge thank you. I think the only thing that I can say to every single person who is a nurse who is working under these conditions that those of us who need you we thank you immensely. We are very concerned about your well-being, and you are very concerned about our well-being. And I hope that you understand that the vast majority of people are very supportive of the, what, the work you're doing and the position you're in. Stephen, you get the last word here. What's, uh, what's your message to the nurses in this province? Bingo. It's, that's exactly what Janet, Janet put it in words. The, the thank yous that we need to share with them are an awful lot more than, you know, here's another three bucks an hour or something. It's, they're, they're the critical part of the system. And without them, 
um, we have nothing. We have no health care. I, I don't care how many doctors or gizmos or bells and whistles you've got. If without the nurses, you don't have health care. But that's also too, including the guys who mop the floor, uh -huh. um, including the, the person who brings you uh, green jello, um, <laughs> which I hate um, now, I think, especially. Um, and those people, you know, it's... There's a bazillion dollars worth of, um, of equipment sitting around, and we don't pay these people well enough. That's the simple. So thanks. Thanks. We're going to leave it there. Janet, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on the program and sharing your heartfelt stories and, of course, your messages as well. Gratitude. Thank you for having me. Take care. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.